Pokemon and Golf fans, it's your boy GS Luke here with our betting and DFS preview for this week's Shriners Children's Open. Gonna make sure you're ready for all of your exposure. First off, with a look at the golf course, give you an idea of what to expect around TPC Summerlin, some key stats, some comp courses to help you find your top plays, and then afterwards, some of the pieces of exposure that I'll be getting to this week, both from the DFS and the betting side of things, out there for this tournament. It's a fall swing event, we've got football going on as well, but wanna make sure we have all our bases covered over here on the golf side so that's what we're gonna do here quick concise preview out there and to the point so let's start off first off with a look at the golf course and what to expect from tpc summerlin summerlin has that same kind of desert feel that we had last week out there in utah so some natural areas just off the fairway which you'd come to expect for a las vegas golf course but on top of that it's also a little bit of a shorter golf course and a little bit more tricky around the green so last week it was a resort style golf course at the black desert championship this week it's a tpc style venue so a little bit more challenging on and around the greens which is going to make the scoring slightly harder to come by so compared to that complete birdie fest that we had out there for last week this one still low scoring still probably something close to 20 under par that wins but not everyone's going to be going to get to that kind of score a few other things to note about this golf course is that we do have bent grass greens same type of agronomy that we had the week before and that it plays a lot shorter than the scorecard yardage because of the firm soil out there in las vegas and the slight elevation that you're playing at as well so a lot of wedges that you're going to have around tpc summerlin which you might not expect from just looking at the scorecard yardage but in terms of our key stats what i'm actually looking for in players number one i've got shots gained approach at the top that shouldn't be a surprise it is almost always our number one key stat but the one thing to really hone in on here would be the proximity buckets we've got a lot of shots from 150 yards and in and you're going to see that reflected with my weighting over here of course all of that posted over there on the patreon version but if you're on that you'll see that from 150 and in a lot of my weighting is right there and then also from 175 to 200 you've got a lot of par threes where you're going to have shots in that proximity bucket and of course if you were to lay back off the tee you're going to have a lot there as well your putting you've got some bent grass stats i'm looking at but because we've had three four events here during the fall you do can, or at least can look at some of your recent four metrics where to your better percentage in the modeling it is over a 12 and a half percent weighting shots gained around the green real tricky around the green shots here so something that you can't ignore like we did for last week at the black desert championship resort style golf if you're worrying about get out, getting up and down you're probably not going to win anyways this week even your winner like a tom kim the last two years who by the way we've hit outrights on the last two years uh more on tom kim here to come in a second but that's half the reason that he's won at this golf tournament back to back he's got a very sturdy around the green game and when he was missing greens around Summerlin he was able to get up and down off the tee more of an accuracy over a driving distance course partially because of the extra length that you have off the tee at elevation and also because of the huge penalty for hitting it in the natural areas and then in terms of comp courses not a ton that I like but TBC Craig Ranch you've got some mid to long irons there so I like that in terms of the par three comp Pebble Beach has similarly tough green complexes so uh really tricky around the green sometimes and then Silverado is very similar from the ball striking perspective more of an accuracy course off the tee and then uh precision with the irons so I would say these comps may be a little bit less important on a week like this than most as they're not the sturdiest comps that we have out there in the PGA Tour but in general we're looking for somebody that can hit some fairways fill it up on some bent grass greens and then ideally have some iron form heading in so that started off with Tom Kim I promised yet we'd get to him here I'm not betting him outright this year at least as of right now even though we've hit him for an outright the last two years he's at 12 to 1 now the number is just too low for me to go out there and take a bite especially with his recent form being a little bit sketchy over his last few starts but this golf course was made for Tom Kim it is an accuracy first golf course that is the first check in his box he's also got a really good mid to long iron play uh, short irons too he's just a really good iron player in general doesn't really have a proximity bucket that he struggles in so that's why he's the best player in this field right not surprised he's the most expensive player but what he really like is the agronomy he's really good on bent grass greens around the green on bent grass he's one of the best players in the world and of course he's a back-to-back -back champion here the issue is 12 to 1 is just way too low a number especially in a fall series event like this like if it was Scotty Scheffler it was John Rahm he had bit them at like 7 8 to 1 in this kind of field but Tom Kim is a clear step down in talent level in fact it probably had to be like a Rory McIlroy level player um, maybe Colin more Kaba for me to bet them at 12 to 1 in this kind of field a uh, Tom Kim if he was closer to 21 I, I would take a bite on it so what I'm gonna do and last year by the way 
He opened with two straight minus four rounds. Um, so it was, I believe, minus eight after the first few days and then went on to win the golf tournament. If we could find a slightly better live outright number on Tom Kim, I might take a nibble. But in DFS, he's my favorite play towards the top end of the board. He's by far the best player in this field, has by far the best form at this golf course of anyone in the field. $500 more expensive than Davis Thompson is not enough. Same thing, $600 more than Pendrith. That is just not a large enough gap. And then even these 9K range players, I, I like Kitayama. We'll talk about him here in a minute. He should be two, maybe even $3,000 more expensive and should probably be getting the Scotty Scheffler treatment in this kind of field. So while I don't love the outright right now, we'll have to see if I end up adding an outright live at some point. I think for DFS, he's going to get some ownership, but probably not enough for the kind of price tag that he has here. If I was making the pricing, he'd be around $12,000 because he is a clear step up in talent level, course history, even form compared to some of these other top of top level players. And you're going to see that reflected with the projection. He's at an 85 point projection. Kitayama has some of the best form of anyone in the world um, coming in ball striking the living shit out of it. Yeah, he's still only at a 78 point projection. So in DFS, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to play the best plays this week, especially towards the top end of the board where ownership isn't the end all be all. You're going to have to eat some guys that are 15 to 25 percent up here. And if Tom Kim's only going to be 20, maybe 25 percent owned, then I'm going to have at least double the field with my ownership. So don't love the outright number, but do love him as a play out there in DFS, partially because I think he's too cheap at $10,800 and also with that elite form over the last few years. Next up, we got Kurt Kitayama, who, by the way, the shots gain metrics on Kitayama are as good as humanly possible. Gained over 10 strokes tee to green last week. Uh, two weeks before that, went out there, did the same exact thing and could just not make a putt for his life. So if we take a look at the last 12 measured rounds, uh, you'll see why I'm so excited to play Kurt Kitayama, gaining just under two two strokes ball striking per round is losing strokes with the putter which can be a habit out there for Kurt Kitayama but on these bent grass greens in the past it's not like he's great on the surface right still losing strokes to the field he is at least 0.4 strokes better on bent grass than what we've seen lately which if you take a look at the last 24 measured rounds he's losing 0.72 strokes gained putting per round so it's been about as bad on the greens as humanly possible but what we have seen from Kurt Kitayama are a few spike performances he's gone out there from time time usually like once a month something along that kind of rate and he goes out there and gains two three strokes putting to the field if he goes out there he gains 10 strokes ball striking again and um, around the green is decent and then gains a couple strokes putting that is a runaway win in this kind of field and what i really like about kitayama um the approach stats were the main thing that drew my eye but it also comes down to how well rounded his game is he's a solid around the green player if he gets into contention i'm not worried about some of those tricky around the green shots he's been both long and accurate off the tee lately which he's normally a little bit wild when it comes to his accuracy so has certainly found something when it's come to the driving accuracy it's why he's more of a consistent gainer in that category lately than what we've normally seen from him so with these ball striking stats always got to get is some sort of putting regression and it could turn into a win so the outright number i took was 33 to 1 he was 30 to 1 on hard rock bet before i boosted it to 33 to 1 and he's coming in with and i said a few weeks ago that recent form could be a little bit fickle but now that we've had a few fall series events players at kirk kitayama have a full 12 round sample size this fall we can start to look at those stats and when you take a look at kirk kitayama's stat profile he's hitting the ball better than literally every other player in this field it's not even particularly close with the two shots gained ball striking per round. So $9,700, I do think he's going to get played out there in DFS just because the shots gained stats are just too good to pass up. If I see them, other people out there are going to see those same kind of metrics, and I would be very surprised if he was going to be under 20% owned. So just like a Tom Kim up here, you're going to have to eat some chalk out here in this kind of field, especially if you want to play some of the players that are playing the most solid golf, and I'm okay doing that with a $9,700 golfer or a $10,800 golfer in Tom Kim. Some of the better players that we have to even choose from, not so much when it's a six, a seven, or an 8K range player that's a, a little bit lower level and that we don't trust nearly as much. So if there's going to be chalk that I'm taking, it's towards the top end of the board. And um, these are two pretty popular examples of players that I'll be getting over the field on. Just check a lot of the boxes that we're looking for and hopefully can go out there and find the putter and, and cash us an outright bet. 
before we talk about our last four plays so one more core play and then three value plays towards the bottom end of the board that i took for outrights as well uh, but i do want to mention how you can find these spreadsheets so that of course is over there on my patreon page on there you get everything on here completely uncensored that would include all my projections modeling exposure um you got the recent four metrics on here event history recent form for every player as well um, all updating throughout the week so we've got ownership which will be coming out a little bit later on this evening i'll also have my full player poll before lock there tomorrow and all the showdown content throughout the weekend so patreon place is where you can find all of that information and where you can download all of it for yourself so just 15 dollars a month will give you access to the golf dfs tier which is how you get access to all of these dfs spreadsheets so make sure to check it out link in the description of the video to go out there and join the patreon page and uh, help support the channel as well so make sure to check it out it should help you save some time out there with your process and give you all the actionable information that you need week to week to go out there and get your process started so check it out link in the description as i said before but uh next core play that we're going to go with maybe my favorite play on the entire slate out here is ben griffin at eighty two hundred dollars so the outright bet ended up being a boosted plus um four thousand number got him up to forty four hundred for my outright and what i like about ben griffin is that he fits this style golf course to a T. We want to take him at courses where you don't have to be a bomber because he doesn't have that kind of length off the tee, where it's more so about from fairway and in. He reminds me a lot of a Webb Simpson in that way, where if he can just remove the off the tee aspect from a golf course, he's one of the best players that we have in the world. And you can say that about Ben Griffin really consistent iron play one of the best putters that we have out there in the pga tour so you give me some solid form for griffin over his last three four starts which speaking of we go down here to eighty two hundred dollars you'll see what i'm talking about off the tee has been a little bit of a sore spot lately but we just mentioned that's not the biggest factor at this kind of golf course more about hitting fairways and hitting in a long way and everything else has been very solid he's gaining in all three categories except off the tee we zoom out to the last 24 rounds you see it's a whole lot of the same in fact the same exact kind of stat pro Profile, where he's losing about a quarter of a stroke off the tee but gaining about 0.68 strokes per round approach gaining solidly both around the green and with the flat stick um if he's gonna have his first ever tournament if he's gonna go out there break through it's at this sort of course it's at a sanderson farms kind of event the, the courses where you don't have to be a Roy mcmurray to go out there and compete or where ben griffin is live every single week on tour so 44 um to one um had a solid week last time out but did not go out there and crack the win but is playing the kind of golf where if he goes out there has a spike putting week could end up in the winner's circle so i think you're going to see a player like a ben griffin win this week i don't think it has to be griffin himself but somebody that's been playing solid golf recently that um is due for a win at some point are, are the kind of guys that you see these fall series events it's not normally just random names that are 200 to one to go out there and win oftentimes it's players that have been knocking at the door for quite some time they finally get in a weaker field like this and at a golf course that maybe de-emphasize size is one of their weaknesses so that's why i like a ben griffin he's been playing solid golf for quite some time now he's not some one hit wonder he's not some guy who's gotten hot for two three weeks ben griffin has been playing this level of golf for five six months now so i think that wind's coming whether it happens this fall next fall whatever I'm going to be there on Ben Griffin quite often. So $8,200, I think the ownership will be about pretty average on Griffin in this range. You've got guys like a Vegas, a Harry Hall, even a Cam Davis, a Hadwin, that I think will get some ownership in the 8K range. So something about 15% or lower is what I'm personally expecting in terms of ownership, which if that ends up being the case out there in large field GPPs, then I'll still get over the field. So is our last core play. Um, core plays are guys I'm taking for at least 2x leverage in my lineups. So these top two players, you're probably looking at 45 to maybe even 50% even exposure. Down here with Ben Griffin, probably at least 35 to maybe even 40% exposure out there in my lineup. So definitely guys, I have some conviction behind and will be key pieces of my player pool this week. Next up, we got our first value play. So this is just a, pretty much a core play towards the bottom end of the board. Still players that I'm looking to get at least 2x leverage on in that I also went out there and mixed in for an outright bet. So I played JJ Spawn last week, also took him for an outright, did not work out well. He got started off the wrong way. Round number one, went out there completely imploded. Um, did not look great after Thursday, but had a much better finishing to the week. So if you take a look at the uh, recent form, you'll quickly see why JJ Spawn should be on your radar. Even after the horrible start, managed to top 25, withdrew the week before that, had a horrible start. But if you look at the last five months of play, 
he is the best player in the field. In fact, even if we just look at the last 24 measured rounds, you quickly see why JG Spawn should be towards the top of your list. He's gaining in all four stat categories, including over a stroke per round out there on approach. That is 1.6 shots gained total per round. And if you zoom out even further, I believe it's the last three month sample size, um, he's gaining over two strokes per round. In terms of his shots gain total. And if you zoom out to the last like five, six months, it's still like a stroke and a half per round in terms of his shots gain total. So it's not like he's only playing shitty field events. It's not like he's only playing in events like the Shriner Children's Open. A lot of those shots gain metrics were against top tier to even average fields. So I would say extremely impressive for JJ Spawn. If you've used him the last few weeks, you have not gotten that payoff. But if you quit now, you're probably quitting uh, at the worst possible time because this kind of golf course fits him to a T. You can see he's my number one model ranking, number two recent form ranking, number two long-term ranking out there for a JJ Spawn. And it makes sense. He's got the kind of iron play we're looking for. Mid to short irons, he's got that on Pat. Um, shots game putting on bent grass, it's pretty average for Spawn. You can see he's actually a little bit worse than his 24-round baseline. Uh, pretty tough to match what he's done recently, though, with how well he's been putting the ball. And just like you have with Ben Griffin, this is the kind of player that he's just going to win soon. Like, J.J. Spawn, I know he's got a tournament out there before, um, but he's playing so solid golf his last five, six months that you put him at a golf course that emphasizes his strengths, and I could easily see him going out there and taking it home. So that's why I took him for the outright at 44-1. to 1. I do think in DFS he's going to get some ownership. In fact, I actually think he'll probably be higher owned than what we have here with Ben Griffin, which for a cheaper player is pretty surprising, especially a $7,900 spawn who hasn't had the best two starts lately. But the shots gain metrics mean something, especially when it's not like a two, three week thing. Like you get hot during the fall, that could easily fizzle out. Would not surprise anyone. JJ Spawn, though, has been playing like this for a good portion of a half a year at this point. So uh, it's a lot harder to just brush that off when it's been such sustained success. Um, and you can see over here, he's got an 80% made cut rate over an 80-point projection. That's actually a better projection than Kurt Kitayama, and he's $7,900. So that's the other aspect to it. He's cheaper than your average salary, and I believe the third or fourth highest projection on the entire slate, right? Not of guys down here in like the 7-8K range, of guys on the entire slate. You've got like Tom Kim, I think either a Pendrith, a Jaeger, or a Thompson has a slightly higher projection than J.J. Spawn, and then it's J.J. Spawn. They're at number three. I mean, just really impressive stuff for a player that cheap. Next up, we got Daniel Berger at 66 to 1. And uh, speaking of guys that are starting to play solid golf, Daniel Berger is looking like the Daniel Berger of old. And if we're and this is a huge if, okay? So like this is not reality. So let's let's ground ourselves before I make this statement. If this was the old Daniel Berger, he's by far the best player in this field. And that's a huge if. Like I said, we, we can't live in that delusion land. He's not the same Daniel Berger as before, but he's starting to look a whole lot more like that. I mean, you'd You'd be crazy not to say that after what he's done the last few weeks. He's been very impressed from tee to green all year. And lately, that's only continued. Uh, beginning parts of his uh, quote-unquote comeback, he was going out there. He was gaining over a stroke and a half per round ball striking, but was losing over a stroke per round putting. And as the year has gone on, he took that from a huge negative to closer to a neutral towards the middle to latter half of the season. And lately, has started to flip it into the positive. So if we go down here, find Daniel Berger, you can see he's about a neutral with his shots gained putting stats. But the last few weeks, you've start, st started to see him go out there and actually gain strokes to the field. But the rest of the game has been solid for quite some time. In fact, to go back to the last 24 measured rounds, you can see the putting gets a little bit worse, but T to green still gaining in two out of the three categories, about a neutral when it comes to his shots gained approach. And the iron play, if anything, has been his huge strength this year. So the fact that he's slightly losing lately is not a big red flag for me. He still had some top end finishes despite that. The more important aspect is that he's finally starting to get some putts to drop. And you can see on the bent grass surface that he's a slight gainer for his career, which is almost 0.4 shots better than his 24 round baseline. We're starting to get the Daniel Berger that looks confident on the greens, that is starting to, you know, look confident out there in his media interviews as well. Um, all of that is just huge positive news for him going forward. So I'm bidding him out right this week. I haven't heard a lot of people talking about him, which frankly surprises me with what we've seen the last few weeks. And just like a few of these other players, like a, a Griffin, a Spawn, it just feels like they're trending towards a win. Um, Daniel Berger's the same way. When he gets back to his old self, which I don't even think is an if, I think it's a when with Daniel Berger with how he's trending, how um, the momentum is working towards that. When he gets back to old Daniel Berger, this is somebody that's winning once a year. 
He's that sort of player. He's a top 10 player in the world. You'd be surprised if he wasn't winning almost every single year. And he was winning legit level events before. This kind of field, this kind of number, 66 to 1 at the Shriner Children's Open. Next year, we might be looking back at this tournament, this number, even if he doesn't win, right? Might not even work out for this. Out, might, even not, might not even work out this week. Six months from now, we might be like, what the hell? 66 to 1 on Daniel Berger when he's like 25 to 1 at Pebble Beach. Like, that, that would not surprise me. If by the time we get to the ball swing, we have guys like Daniel Berger at like 25, 30 to 1, and by the way, a much, much stronger field. If he starts playing that kind of golf again, that's the respect that Daniel Berger will get. So I think this is one of the last few times that you're going to have an opportunity to bet a number like this on Daniel Berger, especially in a field like this. Then the last play we're going to talk about here is my uh, my biggest long shot. And I've got to say, Ben Coles is really growing on me. I, I like the fro that he's got going. He's got the little bit of uh, lettuce going in the back. But he's $7,000. He's 110 to 1. He was 100 to 1. I boosted him to 110 out there for my outright. And he's not playing his style of golf, which you may say, like, why, why is that a great thing, Luke? And let me show you what he has been doing. He's gaining off the tee, which he's not a good off the tee player, at least historically, not a very good off the tee player. Gaining a stroke per round approach, okay, that's impressive shit, and then losing a short game. And you may say, like, okay, that's a pretty good stat profile. What's so weird about this? Normally, it's, it's the exact opposite. He's not the most consistent ball striker, but he is normally a really good putter. So we're getting him on bent grass, which you can see for his career, he gains about a half a stroke putting per round. That is two thirds of a stroke better per round than his last 24 round baseline. And lately, it's just been the stripe show from Ben Coles. He's got the swag lettuce going on. As I said, he's only $7,000, 110 to one. And if he's going to win a tour event out here, it's going to be a shorter course where you don't have to be that stout off the tee. He's got the Ben Griffin syndrome going where he's not going to go out there and win an event that Rory McIlroy wins. But at an event like this where off the tee, a lot of very unimpressive players have gone out there and taken home the trophy, this is the perfect setup for Coles. And the reason why I'm so excited to take him at 110 to 1, now $7,000, fantastic play out there in GPPs, is all he's got to do is regress back to his mean with the flat stick. And this is a top 10 finish for Ben Coles. I mean, he goes out there, he hits the ball like he has been lately, and then he gains two or three strokes putting over the week. I mean, that's at least a top 25, if not a top 10, if he has his sharp stuff on approach or off the tee. So um, 110 to 1, I think it was worth a shot. That's why I bet him out there for an outright. But in DFS, this is the kind of player that I'm looking for. Somebody that has some positive regression coming out there with the flat stick and also someone that's playing above their baseline with the approach play or off the tee play. And in this case, it is both categories out there for Ben Coles. If there's one thing that you can sustain from week to week, at least somewhat reliably, it's your shots gained approach or off the tee. Your swing, the way that you're actually hitting the golf ball is somewhat repeatable from day to day. It's why players work on it after they finish their round. Putting around the green is a lot more variant. So if anything, that's the kind of stat that you would hope would have some quick regression on it. So that's the case for hoping that Ben Coles can go out there and gain on the greens. And if he does, could be in for a massive week at the Shriners. Alrighty guys, that is all I've got for the DFS embedding preview. Before you hopping out of here, smash a like button for me and also comment down below who you've got as your winner for this week for a chance to earn a free month on my Patreon page. And if they're at least 25 to one to win and you're the first person to guess them down below, you will win a free month of that Patreon page. So if you want access to all the projections, modeling analysis that you see throughout my videos, make sure to check that out. Also enter the giveaway for a free chance to earn that. Also go ahead, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well, so you don't miss any of the content that comes. That'll include our weekly live stream Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, our showdown content for rounds two through four, as well as the rest of the fall series events and all of 2025. So you won't want to miss any of that. Make sure you get notified when I'm putting content up and also when I'm going live with those live streams. So subscribe button is exactly how you can do that. Smash that like button, help get this out there to even more people and best of luck with all the exposure you're getting to. Whether it's in a large field GPP, hopefully I see a takedown or two from the community or over there on the proper betting side of thing, hopefully you can make it a profitable week there too so i appreciate your support of the channel guys best of luck as i mentioned before and let's have ourselves a week out there for the shriners children's open